Good morning, folks. One defunct piece of Chinese space debris plus one Russian satellite equals a space collision. This, of course, happened well before the information was released to the public, and one can't help but wonder if since then one of the collided pieces might have taken a descending trajectory. Dear Don Scott, it appears the sun has an electric sky. The electric sun theory says that the coronal heating, drive, and solar wind energizer is an external electromagnetic force. And whether the ion cyclotron waves identified here come from a torus around a plasma pinch point of a discharge, or from the magnetic fields moving through electric space, you combine that with a lack of convection on the sun, and it's electric. Woogie woogie woogie. You remember East India has been taking boulder-sized hail. Western India now facing one of its worst droughts ever. Just another example of how global warming should be called climate extremes. And that warming, while real to a degree, is being put into perspective on a weekly basis. Great pickup by Forbes here. Tropical Cyclone Sandra strengthening off the Queensland coastline. This huge line of rain coming off of it, such a shame that New Zealand can't get some of the drought mitigation. The other powerful weather story is Winter Storm Triton spinning counterclockwise across the states, ripping warm, moist air north along the leading east edge. It's going to cool and condense into huge snow totals by the time the water is delivered to the northern part of the storm, but before freezing we will have the chance for severe weather. Critical Frequency Review. This is the FOF1 value. It's a wave propagation metric, but determined by the ambient energy or excitement of that layer. This is the end of the previous solar minimum. You will see it go up in the early 2000s for solar maximum, back down for our solar minimum, but even without the sun acting its age right now, Houston, we have a problem. This is a pillar of the over-ionization of Earth that I have reported in various forms for almost two years. Solar wind, density, speed, and temperature rising in orange, yellow, and green, only slightly, a minor event with virtually no magnetic disturbance, but slight induction shy of 3 hertz and from the baseline. Checking out the umbral fields, we begin to see the next coronal holes coming in red, but still cannot say the green equatorial region is facing Earth. We can now see it definitively darker in 335 angstroms. Putting the field lines atop 211 angstroms reveals that the opening is certainly there, but still boxed out of an Earth-facing position. Sunspots actually got interesting overnight, and it's not just our baby region we saw yesterday growing up fast, little complexity to show off as well. But on the limb, cresting now, fellow observers, this is what we've been waiting four days to see. The leading edge of the active region that caused NASA to wait a few more days to turn their rover back on. One of the most hellacious blasts we've ever seen, luckily flew the opposite direction of Earth. But you know, the wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Hello, beastie. Eyes open, no fear, at 6.15am Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.